Welcome back my DIY nomads, we're back again for another episode. Now behind me you might see an empty van and that is because we are going to be starting another conversion. Um, we are starting on a Mercedes Sprinter. Now the plan is I'm going to be running this conversion, this series of videos alongside Ben's Luton and I'm also going to be putting up a couple of like finishing videos for uh, Jules and Josie's for Transit. So I totally understand there's been a bit of like a you know, there's like quite a few videos out there and people have been asking for me to finish off like the sort of the four transit stuff. But honestly, like Jules and Josie still haven't finished their van because of everything that's been going on. Ben's obviously still obviously going to be working on his Luton for quite a while. Um, so I thought this conversion would be quite fun because we, we've got to get this done pretty quick. We've got about, uh, about a month-ish to get this done. It's a really nice conversion and it's got a conversion for... A couple uh, and their dog and their upcoming two kids which is gonna be really cool also I thought it's only appropriate that as we're gonna be doing a Mercedes Sprinter I'd start the video wearing Greg Virgo's it'll only take half an hour t-shirt right guys it's a new day we've got sort of the, we've got the insulation we've got all the panels all the stuff like we need to get for the first sort of stage of converting this van we've been down to Wix um, we've also gutted the van well I say gutted the van we still need to just take out the floor which we're going to do next but it's looking really clean this uh, sprinter is like really nice Tom did tell me one thing so something that I actually didn't know about sprinters these little the little sections where the trim is attached these where these come through the actual steel of the body as you can see moisture does leak in through these points so Tom who owns this van has already uh, seek flex them up which is nice um, he's also he was also the one that installed the roof rack and he made pretty sure that these were all seek flexed and watertight as well Guys, we do, I just noticed something really naughty. So, the other day, I put some cardboard over the number plate to like, so you guys like wouldn't be sharing the owner's number plate online. And we totally forgot to take it off when we went to Wix. So, the policeman we passed in the lay-by who was taking everyone's speed, I am really sorry, that was a genuine mistake. Like always, once you take the floor up, it's usually filthy under here. This isn't as bad as I've seen some vans. Um, I must admit, the Sprinter's floors are top notch. They are put down with Velcro, no screws going through the floor, it's all bolts, which is really nice. Um, yeah, really impressed with how this is put together, to be honest. But yeah, I'm not gonna film us cleaning it out. I'll film it before and I'll film it after, but sweeping out is a bit boring. Okay. floor is already much cleaner. Now what we're going to do is before we actually wash and clean the floor any further we're going to cut out the windows and install the windows and also cut and fit the roof vent because it's just going to throw a bunch of shards in here anyway. Um, so yeah we might as well wait until after. On my channel already I've done a video showing how you can fit these bonded windows in about 20 minutes providing you've got all the prep done. Um, literally from starting to cut to having the windows fitted and you can take your hands away. 20 minutes, I've been able to do it. Um, it's obviously, it obviously takes a bit more time than that in real life because you need to 
measure up, make sure the hole is in the right place, you know, take the right measurements and make sure that everything's lined up properly. If anyone that's doing this outside, they might be like worried about rain coming or something like that. So that's why once you get everything prepped and ready, you can get this from cutting a hole to window bonded in about 20 minutes. I'll link the that uh, video below, but I'll also show you guys fitting these windows as well. If angle grinding anything, I would recommend you wear a long sleeve top. I am not because, well, I'm just taking the risk like an idiot, but I would recommend you wear yeah, a long sleeve top, gloves, probably the most important thing is eye protection, second to none, like in second to that is ear protection. So just cover yourself up while angle grinding. It's, you know, it can be A, very, very noisy and quite dangerous by flinging metal filings everywhere. Right, we're eight minutes down, so you can go to like once you've measured it all up, the cutting. We just need to prep it, deburr it, glue it on, and that's it. Really, quite an easy, quick, simple process. I can't stress this enough, though. Make sure you clean up all, I mean, every single last bit of those little metal filings and shavings that you get from the cutting process. Um, really good to do this on a dry, sunny day like we're doing because. They don't really stick that well to the, the van. If you do it when your van's wet, you're gonna ruin your van. It'll just have all these rust freckles all over it. It will look rubbish and it is a nightmare getting rid of those rust freckles. Like that? Yep. So Ben's putting on the window primer right now before we put the glue on, but you might have noticed we've also already got the uh, edge trim on. Now, what we did was we use a quick drying paint and we just basically sprayed the edge um, just to make sure that the bare metal underneath doesn't rust. I've seen quite a few videos of people where they don't do that and it, you know, you don't actually have to spray that edge but for me I just like the idea of spraying it uh, just to make sure that there's no chance of it rusting later down the line. Um, it is optional but it does obviously add a little bit of time to the the, the window fitting. Windows on, we've held it there for a little while, pressed it up against the van as much as possible so the adhesive is really high grab so it, you know it takes a lot of trust I guess but it really does work quick and after 24 hours that's fully set. Now that we've got the first window on we'll get the second window done. So now that the windows are fit the next thing we're going to do is fit the roof vent. Um, we thought obviously get all the cutting done in the same day. It's a beautiful day today. We've gone with the Fiamma Turbo Vent Premium. Um, we originally were gonna go with the Max Fan, um, but we're trying to keep the budget down a bit. So we've gone down to this. This is, it's quite a nice fan actually, to be honest. So it's temperature regulating. So you can set temperatures on the uh, touch panel there. Um, yeah, it's actually, and you can also manually open it as well. But yeah, it's a pretty decent little roof vent, to be honest. So due to certain roof rack restrictions, we're gonna mount the vent here, but actually it's probably worked out better. Rather than having all of the air flow down in that section of the van, we're gonna whack the roof vent just above, literally almost above where like your chest is, as the, 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 the fan will be almost above where their chest is when they're lying in bed, the next owners. So it would be really nice to get like that cooling effect while you're sleeping if it's hot out. Um, but it also allows light in this end and air in this end. So it's a nice balance of the van. The only issue is that uh, we will, we will have to cut out one of the bars at the roof rack. We've already got permission from the owner that we can do this. The reason being is that the 
spaces between the roof rack bars don't match the spacing between the ribs in the roof and we're prioritizing the ribs in the roof um, to keep the strength in the van. Um, it's not going to be anything detrimental to the roof rack to remove one of these bars. Um, especially near the back here where there's a like a lot more there's a, there's a higher density of bars near the back here because I'm guessing as it's a, a like almost like a work roof rack it's got like sh like the roller for putting sheet up so I'm guessing the back's stronger to take that initial sort of loading so yeah it'd be fine to remove a bar up here we're going to cut it just above us here so let's get cracking There's a hole in the roof! So as you can see, there's the offending roof bar that we just need to trim back, but that's all right. Right, we've got the hole cut, so we're gonna follow a very similar procedure with the window, as the windows. Uh, we're going to deburr the edges, paint the edges, but this time around, this needs to get screwed in, not just glued down. Um, so we're going to cut some, we've got some basically roofing battens that are 38 mil by 25. We're going to cut and make a square frame that goes around the, the, the edge of the hole. And then that will allow us to screw down through. We're going to pre-drill the, through the metal. Um, and that will allow us to yeah, drill through the metal into the wood battens. And we'll obviously also seek flex that as well. And that should provide a very secure mounting place for our roof band. So admittedly, this next part really helps if you have someone else to help you with this. but. I'm going to head up there onto the roof. I've stuck these two on with some Seeker Flex and um, I'm going to glue the roof vent, stick it down, screw through into these screws here and then I can cut these two bits of wood and add those afterwards. Right, I've got the roof vent up here. It's ready to go on. I've, caught, uh, I've put a Seeker Flex bead around the edge here. So let's get it in. So there it is on, now I just need to screw through, get these ones done, and then I can let Ben crack on with other jobs. I'm gonna screw around the whole edge, and then I'm gonna tidy up all the excess here so it looks nice and neat. One thing I completely forgot to mention is make sure that you clean the edges of the, around the edge where you're going to stick. Um, you don't want to really get any dirt in there. Right, I've tidied up the edges. This thing is sealed, locked down, ready to rumble. She's a clean beauty now. We've cleaned up, we've given it a wash through. You're never going to get it like perfectly clean. We've got, we've scrubbed away as much as we can. There's some like rust freckles down near the front and we've really scrubbed away at them. We tried to get rid of them as much as possible, but it's not, not gonna be absolutely perfect, but it's absolutely fine. Um, it's all gonna be sealed away after this. It should, we, if we do it properly, it should really actually never see moisture ever again. So should stay perfectly, like perfectly good on here. Perfectly good. Should stay in perfect condition under here. While I've been faffing around with the roof vent, Ben has been cutting and getting all of the uh, floor battens ready. Um, we've also marked out where they're gonna go across so we can take them all out, give it a good clean, and then basically put the glue where we need to within these lines and stick the buttons down. And then we're gonna shut up for the night and come back tomorrow. And then these should be ready to start putting the floor in, in the insulation and the floor in.
kita 